Ahoy mateys! I'm Katie Carroll and I'm an author of books for teens and kids and today I'm on my pirate ship so you can call me Captain Katie and I'm on my pirate ship because I'm gonna read you the first two chapters of my book Pirate Island. It's a middle grade adventure about a boy named Billy and Billy wants to find Captain Kidd's lost treasure. Captain Kidd was a real pirate there's a lot of local pirate history where I'm from that Captain Kidd might have actually visited my hometown in a small island called Charles Island. And I took inspiration from that and came up with Pirate Island. And here we go. Chapter one. As I sit here alone on the beach, well, as alone as I can be since the infamous Captain William Kidd began possessing me, Pirate Island looms dark against a bright blue sky it's the place where my dream of finding kid lost treasure will be fulfilled. And his dreams of I'm not sure what may also come true. Hopefully not at my expense. My mortal body has already had one close call on account of kid. I'm waiting for my sister and her stupid boyfriend to show up. So long as they come ready to dig. I don't care who they are. The sun has yet to dip below the horizon. The steady rhythm of lapping waves is usually a comfort, but nothing can soothe me right now. My skin prickles with anticipation, or maybe the sensation is kids. It's gotten hard to tell who's the source of each feeling. I'm responsible for being numb thumb deep into this search for treasure. My best friend Andy may have started it, but it was me and a long dead pirate who got me, us, numb thumb deep into this mess. Andy used to be the one who would force me into things. One night we were having one of our marathon video game sleepovers. I kept saying we should go to bed, but Andy insisted on one more game. Pepped up on energy drinks, one more game turned into two, which turned into three, which turned into 20. Before I knew it, the sun was rising and we were still playing. My thumb had gone completely numb, and then it cramped up so badly I couldn't use a pen for days. I almost failed a math test because of it. Numb thumb deep is a real commitment, and it was usually me who would get bogged down in the quagmire, while somehow Andy would sail clear away from the swamp like he could control the winds. But it's all William's fault this time. What I mean to say is I got myself into this mess but I'm not sure who or what I am anymore. I used to be a kid named Billy, good student, obedient son, pain in the neck little brother, loyal best friend. Now I go by William, same first name as Kid, famed pirate who died over 300 years ago, though everyone thinks I'm into using the more grown up version of my name. William answers to no one but himself and the pirate who is possessing him. Am I channeling Kid's spirit to be brave? Is he using my body to do his bidding? Maybe both, maybe neither. We haven't really worked out the terms. It's a relationship that's as fluid as the waters of Long Island Sound, which are currently parting to reveal a sandy path. Technically, it's a tombolo, but everyone around here calls it a sandbar. Most of the time it's covered in water, but twice a day at low tide, the waters recede enough to create a thin strip of sand from the shore all the way to Pirate Island. That's the path I'll take to riches, fame, immortality. Which of these are my desires and which are kids? That's another thing I'm not sure about. Our wants are woven together tighter than the fibers of a rope. Doesn't matter anyway, as long as we find the riches. Tonight. Though it has not yet risen, the last full moon of the summer is tonight, and I'm on the final leg of this mystery. But as I wait for my fellow treasure hunters, I'm thinking of beginnings. All endings start somewhere, and Williams begin with Billy, whose adventures always used to start with Andy. Chapter 2 Weeks prior, Andy strode into our summer writing class like he owned the library even though I had it on good authority, namely Andy's, that he hated to read. It was 9.59 a.m. and he was the last to arrive, as usual. 
I was in the back of the library's conference room, arms dangling to the side gorilla style, drying out my pits over the air conditioner. Andy's eyes bugged out when he saw me, and I quickly clamped my elbow shut. Seemed everything I did lately amounted to social suicide. He was probably worried a girl might see me and my dorkiness would rub off on him. He winked at a table full of giggling girls. Sweet, beautiful as the rising sun, Ella Platt among them. Andy shook out his shaggy hair and headed to the back of the room. While I got my hair buzzed every two weeks, he was letting his grow out. That's what the girls like, he had told me. I would have needed a second air conditioner for the back of my neck if I let my hair grow that long. But since summer had started, he cared more about impressing girls than about being comfortable. The question was, did he care more about girls than about his best friend? That was what I had yet to find out. Ella's gaze followed Andy to our usual table, then to me. I dropped my stare to my sneakers, my face burning brighter than lightning. I might as well have posted all over the internet that I had a crush on Ella. Maybe I should have posted about my crush status. It might have been the only way Ella Platt would have noticed scrawny me next to Andy. This was before I became half boy, half pirate William. Back then, I thought the only way I could impress her was with my writing. Mortified, I slipped into the seat next to Andy and noticed how he towered above me even sitting. Had he grown again? His proportions were reaching epic scale, his arms almost as thick as my legs. I snuck a peek to find Ella was still watching Andy, as were the rest of the girls at the table. Our teacher, Mrs. Shields, clapped her hands. Ella whipped her head around, silky brown hair swinging slightly with the movement. Andy turned a glare on me. What if she had seen your monkey act? My cheeks warmed. Had she seen me? She didn't, I whispered, not convincing myself. Never mind Andy. No big deal. She better not have. There was a menace to Andy's tone that told me I'd regret embarrassing him. I tried to listen to Mrs. Shields talk about developing interesting characters, but Andy started his usual fooling around, forming tiny spitballs under the table. I wondered, as I had all summer long, why he was even in the class. It was a voluntary class, and my seventh grade teacher had recommended I take it because I enjoyed creative writing. I think Andy's less than awesome performance in English had something to do with him being here. School was the one thing I was better at than Andy. He kicked my butt in football, his favorite sport, which I quit playing last year. He spanked me in gym soccer, even though I played on a competitive team and he didn't. Baseball at the park, pick up street hockey, backyard badminton, name the sport he was better. It wasn't just sports either. Andy always won when we played video games, card games, and most board games, except Scrabble, which he never wanted to play. And we always ended up doing what he wanted, as if I needed help being invisible. But he had been my best friend since, well, his family had moved to the neighborhood when we were babies. The story goes that my mom brought over a casserole, the dish in one arm and me in the other. Andy's mom, holding him, answered the door. He reached out, grabbed my hand and said, friend. It was his first word. I just about puke every time I hear that story, though we have been best friends ever since. Being Andy's best friend used to be awesome. Who doesn't want to be best friends with the guy everyone wants to be around? Being in his very present made you feel cool, until it, he, didn't. I had grown tired of how he bossed me around and bested me at pretty much everything, except school. I thought I had Andy on that one. Psst, Billy! Andy poked me in the arm. I ignored him. Ahoy, matey, he whispered like he was some kind of pirate. I continued to ignore him until a sticky, slimy spitball smacked against the side of my neck. Land lover, he whispered loudly. A second slimy glob hit my cheek. Hitting me with spitballs was a bit much, even for Andy. I figured I'd better answer before he attacked again. What? 
I asked out of the side of my mouth. Avast, he said. Meet me on the main deck after class. The main deck? It's part of a ship, he said real slowly, like I was stupid for not understanding his gibberish. Just meet me in the research section after class. Andy, the kid who never studied for a test and barely made it out of seventh grade, wanted to do research at the library. Why? I asked, hoping the answer wasn't going to be building a machine that destroys stuff, mainly my life. Arg! Pirate treasure! The quirk of his lip and the glint in his eye told me there was more to it than that. Mrs. Shields glanced in our direction. Let's talk about it later, I whispered. I wasn't sure what kind of pirate treasure Andy expected to find at the library. He was up to something. And I would probably go along for the adventure, like I always did. His crazy schemes usually turned out to be fun when they weren't threatening to ruin my life. And that's it for me today. Mm -hmm.